Welcome to Belchcast. All yeah. right, and we're live here. Really wasn't even trying for that, but it just kind of happened. You that's, know, opportunity, that's, opportunity knocked. That's what happens on this show. We don't yeah. really try, it just happens. That's how we operate. I really wish I could see chat, but yay, Twitch. How's uh, it still doing that thing? <laughs> yeah, just loading forever. It'll load loading. here in a minute, I'm sure. Loading, loading. You know what's the worst freaking website is that goddamn Flickster. Like, their app is amazing. Their website sucks a dick. Really? <laughs> I thought you were going to say YouTube, because that is one of the worst sites for loading videos. No, this one, like... I don't really have trouble with YouTube. All the time all, I have problems. All okay. your, uh, all your whatchamacallits are, uh, like, your ultraviolet copies should be uh, redeemed in the Flickster on the desktop site. Oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. never loads. <laughs> Like, cause I do most of that stuff at work because that's where I'm most productive. But <laughs> clearly, but I just just want to I just want to enter the shit in. And Sony rewards are fucking bullshit. Really? Oh my god! So you know you, you leaflets in your DVDs. Yeah. So you get you, all of a sudden you keep pulling them out and there's a stack of them. Enter the code. What did you buy this with? Fuck! I don't know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's a leaflet. It doesn't even tell me what came with it. Yeah. And there's two. There's two titles on it that neither one of them have anything to do with what title you just bought. Really? Weird. Wow. I don't even know what they can. I'm gonna throw them away now. I mean, I signed up for it, and like, it's just I'm not gonna rack my brain thinking of what I bought with what and when. Yeah. Like I just found a digital copy for horrible bosses. I'm like, all right. <laughs> okay, I guess. I didn't even know it came with one, sir. Sure. 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 Oh, Seven Psychopaths is really good, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, really? I heard that was it, good. We didn't. We haven't seen it yet. It wasn't which, what I was expecting. Yeah. And it was way better than I thought it was going to be. Man, Twitch just keeps getting worse here. All right, you guys ready to uh, start Zishol? Uh, yeah, I might as well I guess you could say that. Well. Got a second here. As ready as we're ever gonna be. Yeah, probably. Same as it ever was. Watching the days go by. All right, I'm just not even gonna mess with Twitch here. There's water flowing underground. Do its thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, before we get started on that, did you read that article of uh, what's his what's his nuts? Um. Warren, is it Warren Spector? Sure. Uh, Warren Spector bashing uh, Lollipop Bash, Chainsaw. Yeah, Lollipop Chainsaw. Oh, uh, I saw a little bit of that, and I, I read a little bit of it, and I decided not to read it. <laughs> and there was, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all right. So, well, since it's just us, and if the Twitch people are listening, or whatever. Hi, Twitch people. Hello. Um, that that totally cements why he hasn't made a successful game in I don't know how long. <laughs> since Deus Ex. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's completely lost touch, and his ego is just so devoid of what uh, what games are anymore. Well, I mean, for for those that didn't read the article, what what is his what was the basics of his argument against that game? I uh, think I his, his basics is his argument was is that a game like this shouldn't exist because me as an, a mature gamer doesn't believe that game is in my market anymore, which it oh, clearly right, right. isn't. Yeah. It's, it's a point of his tastes have changed and he feels the game industry has evolved past this point but doesn't realize there's a generation of children behind them that are just going to be <laughs> in the yeah. same place filling the void that we were in. Yeah, I remember his argument now. He was basically saying well, I'm a father, I'm a 50-something year old, I'm I'm married now, I don't I don't need a game about, you know, TNA or, or a game where it's just all about explosions, which well, is Big fair. knife and big swords, but yeah. at some point, uh, it just like, that's why that game was so much fun for me. It's like you need that little bit of cheery palate cleanser. Well, and it's a classic Japanese game, you know. It's, yeah, but it's also it's satire. Like, I that's true, yeah. Point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just don't think... It, it's weird that somebody like Warren Spector would come out and and really rail against a game that 
doesn't really seem to be hurting anyone. I'm, I mean, I'm sure people would say it, it's, it seems like the same people that were sort of railing against Bayonetta, um, saying like, well, oh, it objects, it, it, uh, you know, makes women into objects. It's like, well, uh, well it's, it's the thing that they did. It's, it's at the surface level. You look at the cover art, the name, and the basic premise. Yeah, you think that's just, it's just dumb. Yeah, like, or and, like, and that's and it has and it had, but it has fun being dumb, which yeah. is, which is frustrating as somebody, a, a, someone that I really enjoyed Deus Ex a lot. Yeah, someone, yeah. someone you can day. respect in the industry. Someone just takes such a, a blatant, un, uh, I'm gonna say unintelligent, but non-research or focused jab at something that he never even played. Did he admit he never played it? Uh, I, I, think, I don't. Rem I didn't read the whole article. It doesn't I, sound like it. I mean, because I mean, I mean, objectionally, like same thing. Like what we have to stand. Like what we stand up for for DOA yeah. is you get you get beyond the, the surface level garbage of that game. There is a phenomenal game. Yeah. In it. Well, I mean, if you yeah. look like if you look at Lollipop Chainsaw and you look at this this incredibly busty, you know, seemingly teenage girl that has is cutting down zombies with rainbows you you look at it and say either it's going to be something dumb like x blades where it's just or it's going to be something that objectifies women and right uh, it doesn't seem like it's either one of those it seems like it's one of those things that one of those pieces of media that successfully manages to have its tongue in its cheek the entire time Yes. And that's where I think where, where Hannah's point was so good with uh, was saying it's a satire of that genre of yeah. games. Like it's here's like, the okay, stuff so you want the on the surface screen. level wrapped up in a fun package. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the movie Scream for video games. And a lot of people don't yeah. understand that yeah, Scream, while it is a horror movie, it is also the just a massive satire yeah. of the entire slasher genre. Of the tropes in that genre. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, yeah. and then, like, no one seems to get the joke that, like, scary movies shouldn't exist because they're parodying satire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, really? <laughs> yeah, you're not making fun of the genre. You're making fun of a movie that made fun of the genre. Yes. Right. And it, yeah. it, it infuriates me to no end. <laughs> and that's kind of where it just, like, like I, I would say no. They, they did an intelligent satire. Mm -hmm. Whereas, whereas scary movies, just a slapstick satire. Yeah, it's a bad uh, yeah, it's, it's a it's an attempt to bring back the it's, Mel Brooks level of satire and parody. It's yeah. two sides of the played. same coin. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's it's normally I wouldn't be so upset or disappointed if somebody comes out and says Lollipop Chainsaw is a bad game. It's like okay, fine. That's your that's, opinion. But, somebody, but it, it was the person it came from. It just it just kind of rubbed me weird. Yeah, that's yeah. that was my point. Like I I respect Warren Spector, even though he hasn't he's struggled in the last couple of years to that's to make something that is good. Um, it's sort of disappointing from somebody. That'd be like if um, uh, Ken Levine came out and said, um, oh, I don't like this game because it's not well well done. It's it's like Ken, yeah. if Ken Levine came out and said the first Ninja Gaiden game on Xbox is a bad game. Yeah, because it and has that, ninjas yeah. in it. <laughs> Just like well, <laughs> well that's I mean that's really the way the that's his surface level as it feel like he talked about this and yeah. it, at length at at his press press conference. I was just like, uh, you know, how do, how do you even you, you're one of the leaders at one of the biggest design expos in the world. Are you going to bash something that you've never even attempted to play. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, every time I think about somebody getting mad about something, I I always, and it sort of relates to um, uh, Lollipop Chainsaw, I always remember Mindless Self-Indulgence's Frankenstein Girls May Seem Strangely Sexy. That uh, entire yes. album is so tongue-in-cheek, but if you take it the wrong way, it is the most offensive album that's ever been released. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But if you just take it as somebody just being dumb and being crazy and having fun with, you know, everything that. Yeah. I mean, if in Lollipop Chainsaw has Little Jimmy Yearn in it as a boss and doing music, so like. Hey, dicks are for my <laughs> that's friends. Amazing. Yeah, like you, you uh, have to sort of put those pieces together and say, well, let's not take, let's not take a game called Lollipop Chainsaw seriously. Yeah. I mean, well, and that's and that's the thing that blows me away is that it was taken seriously and people yeah. got upset about it. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, that's, yep. that's a game where you, like, I knew going into it what I was, what I was expecting, and it delivered fucking spades across the board. I mean, everybody's going to get upset about everything, to be fair, but I think the worst part is that Warren Spector is saying, well, this game shouldn't exist. I was like, well, you can say that this game isn't made for you. Like, I'll say, when Halo 5 comes out, I'll be like, okay, uh, it's going to sell yep. a bajillion copies. I won't purchase it or play it because it's not a game that's made for me, but I'm not going to say, how dare this thing exist because I don't yeah. like it. You know, it's it's what we're seeing uh, in video games in general right now is... Well, probably these 10 years ago exist. for us, we were like, F that thing. I don't want it. That's, that's worse. We're, we're taking steps backwards. But yeah. now, like, it, the, we're a little older. Is Yeah, it, it's a necessary evil. It yeah. gets more people in the door. Yeah. Yeah. And did you also read the article about uh, uh, whatchamacallit um, our favorite game Alpha Protocol. I did. No, <laughs> that I was that. really good. It was Joystick or Kotaku wrote like a love yeah. letter to it saying it's one of the bit. It was his Deus Ex I think he yeah. said. Wow. And I gotta find this. And what's great is I really love that whoever wrote that um, I don't know out, if I still have it up. Came out front and said the reticle is not where you're going to shoot. It the circle that surrounds the reticle is your dice roll. Yep. Yes. And if you want that dice roll to turn out better in your favor, if you want to keep rolling twenties the whole time, put points in a pistols, just use pistols. Yes. And that's the only recommendation you need in that game. Anything else you can do however you feel, but put your first boatload of points in a pistols and that game will be fine. <laughs> Was that this yeah, week that, that they, uh, came out? Uh, it yeah. got shared with me over... Uh, over yeah, somebody Watch sent it to us it's, on Twitter. Somebody sent it on Twitter. Uh, Alpha Protocol is a new Deus Ex joystick. Yep. There it is. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Saving for later. It was <laughs> it was a fantastic read. I'm sitting there, th I just grinning from ear to ear. It's like All the things he said is like, God, I can draw so many parallels to how I felt playing Deus Ex. Yeah. And, like, it, to the point where I was like, man, maybe I should play Alpha Protocol again. Uh, yeah. Well, it's probably a good... Re it's a good thing I don't have it here right now. Because I have too <laughs> yeah. many other things to play. All right, well, it was now that I'm done being distracting and little. <laughs> See, we're building, we're building hype for the live stream. That's right. Yeah. That's Check the do. live stream out, ladies. <clears throat> All right, you guys got your watch and plan ready? Yep. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, let's get started here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Me 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 me. Oh, my oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Watch yeah. the live stream every week. Mhm. Mm <laughs> 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 All right, let's get started in. Three, like a cat. Two, one. Welcome back to another episode of that video game podcast. I'm your host Boston. Over there is Knobs. So and over there's the Hannah. What's going on, people? Uh, I don't think we have any announcements here at the beginning, so let's get started with what you've been playing, Knobs. Well, again, we start every week as we do consistently, like we will tonight with uh, Left 4 Dead Monday Night Game Night. And uh, recaps up on the on online gaming thread. Um, Ian and uh, I guess he's Rosenthal on the forums, I think. Um, yeah. It, Good recap of everything, the shenanigans that happened, because it was another lovely, lovely night of <laughs> killing zombies together. <laughs> Which is, like, one of my favorite things to do, so I yeah. can't complain. Yeah, uh, that's 10 p.m. That. EST, folks. Please come and join us. Everybody's welcome. Um, played some uh, DOA 5 over the weekend, or not over the weekend, but over uh, over the course of the week. I uh, played with my, my man, Seven Hender, over there in Germany, yep. in Deutschland. Our, our favorite German. Yes, and good time just beating the crap out of each other, playing, uh, we, now we're totally way deep into the tag matches, and it just getting screwy. Oh, yeah. Like, we yes. figured out, we can, we can attack, on, like, on the ground, the tag, guy goes flying off the top of the screen onto Jeez. people. Wow. The tag moves have been just ultimate game changers in that, it just, it's awesome. <laughs> the, the game just keeps getting better. I just, yeah. I just love it. I'm probably going to buy another costume pack this week because that's Why what I'm going to do. New paycheck, nice. new costume pack. Let's do it. 
but yeah, so it's a that's a good time. I'd really love to get more people in on and play in that game because it, it is a gem, and yeah. the update should be coming out soon. So everyone gets a free level and some more costumes and gets to see everything what everybody's got. So yeah, oh, they're um, actually doing compatibility packs. Oh, and big balancing. That balance sheet, yeah. their balance list is it's got to be as tall as I am. Yeah, that's nice. huge. Six foot five of corrections. It's craziness. <laughs> Um, but uh, the big game I played this week was uh, Dead Space Three. I yes. I think I'm only an hour into it. I I uh, so how long? How far are you into it? Oh, I'll play through two. Oh, okay. Well, I got to the point where you're first on the Roanoke and you get to the um the first crafting station. I'm like, okay, I need to take a break here, and I <laughs> haven't had time to go back to it. Nice. Um. So, outside of the tropes of trilogies that this seemed to handle a little bit better than most, hmm. and I was starting to think and why like, I was having trouble with the third entry into any series, is what character is an idiot enough to be wrapped up in the same game or same scenario three times? <laughs> yeah, a third time. <laughs> like, I can see, the, and how they handled the first one was completely understandable. The yep. second one, completely understandable. And even this time, they even got the the point for Isaac to be there. It makes sense. Yeah, and they That's they good. didn't they didn't take forever to get to the point either. Where it's like, hey, you gonna come back? And Isaac's like, no. And they're no. like, hey, how about how about this reason? And he's like, no. okay then. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said no like four or five times. And yeah, it wasn't until they really were stuck. We're like, well, I'm here. That's so let's see. Let's it do this thing. <laughs> uh, I do have to say though, um, that intro to the game is probably, along with Mass Effect Two, probably one of my favorite intros this gen. What nice. previously on uh, Dead Space? No, no, the the playable one with the whoever that dude is, oh. like two hundred years prior on that ice planet. Amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. Just yeah. and and having. The amount of um, interactivity with it uh, was great when things are falling apart. Well, especially because like, like here's a game like you probably haven't played Dead Space two in in ages. Oh, right. Samson, come on, you're wrapped up. Come, come on, on dogs. Come on, come on, come on. Get off me, dog. All right, hi. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, like it, it gives you enough coming at you and doesn't throw all the telekinesis and stasis at you right from the get-go. Like yeah. It gets you re to fighting necromorphs again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, a, in a limited capacity, like, like you don't have a plasma cutter, you have this little rifle, and it's really hard to hit limbs with a rifle. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of just pumping rounds into them until they die, like you would if you saw one of the first time, like not yeah. knowing the game. So it yeah. kind of gets you back into that and using your idiot line to get you where you need to go and it was what a great rack so wow yeah i'm i'm disappointed a little bit in the um the game using uh crouching though because i keep clicking in the stick to do the idiot line and i crouch and i'm just like mm, no uh oh, there's wow. a couple problems w with that and usually my biggest problem with with first person shooters and third person shooters is if there's an enemy on top of you and your gun is clipped through the through the enemy <laughs> yeah. you can't hit them yeah uh, especially when you're being swarmed and in this game more than any other any other dead space games the pacing is significantly different for the combat mm. you mm. are constantly swarmed oh really it's Where, not like one or two enemy in it anymore. Well, d every necromorph can sprint at you now. I noticed that pretty quickly at the beginning. Where I'm like, oh, there's a necromorph. Oh my god, my face. They're not <laughs> all gangly and trying. Like it look, looked like babies learning to walk in the first two games. Where mm -hmm. they just there's so many limbs in every yeah, different direction. Especially the first can't one. Figure out what to move. Well, that was one of the parts that made the first one so scary. Is just like trying to see these things shamble and like. With the necromorphs like bursting out of people and evolving people, um, yeah. I always found that the scariest. Where like it looked like a baby calf, just sort of like, "How do I do this? Oh, I'm gonna kill you!" <laughs> you know, like <laughs> just sort of like ha that was the scariest part. It didn't know how to control itself. 
Yeah, and that was that. I mean, that was, and this is completely different uh, as far as man, and even bashing dead bodies doesn't help in this one at all. Oh, really? Because there's those little heads that scurry around and pick up. Doesn't matter if it's half limb; it'll spawn enough limbs for it to move at you. Yeah, Ugh. Ugh. those things are creepy. Oh, it's even worse in this Ugh. one because it's not just one that kind of running around. There's like a dozen of them that spew out, and you never get them all. Oh yeah, before they can find a host. Ugh. That's, That's how you know you're playing a scary game when you can legitimately use the word host. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I I really like the game mm -hmm. as a whole. I don't want to go in a spoiler territory. There are some awesome set pieces, um, and a logical twist towards the towards the game of kind of why you're at this particular place at this particular time. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, just things that just drive me nuts about about games like this that have carried on a long tradition of of it seems like well how is this stuff here if no one's been here for so long yeah. oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah like just the break in reasoning just drives me insane yeah like here I am at this place where no one clearly could have ever gotten to before but somehow there's some crates for me to but break there's up. a bunch of <laughs> ammo and a peng can. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, come on. Yeah, it's the it's the suspension of disbelief. And that, like, those are the parts that, that only the, only very few of those things pulled pulled me out of the game. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, this game is it, it it suffers from one thing is is Dead Space one and two have a deliberate pace where yeah. you can corral enemies to you and give yourself enough time to pick off limbs. With this. It doesn't matter what's in front of you. You have to be concerned about it. it's what's coming from behind you. Ah. Uh, and you're never in an area where you're backed in the corner and can funnel enemies to you. Yeah. You're getting Ooh. attacked. And there are vents everywhere. Right. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> I mean, is this, a, is this a, a... You know, everybody reviewing the game lately and everybody talking about the game lately has been sort of either complaining or at the very least commenting about it being more... Uh, actiony, more action paced. Is this is this sort of a result of that that more fast paced action style? I think it is. I mean, I hate to say it, it's got Isaac has a dodge roll. I don't know if that was in any of their games, was it? I don't believe. Maybe uh, too, but I I would have never. Used I it. never remembered using it before no. this game. You need to use this thing a lot hmm. because you need to put distance between you and whatever abomination is flying at you. <laughs> whatever shambling <laughs> horror. <laughs> whatever nightmare creature. Yeah. I did, I I kind of disappointed they changed the stalkers' looks. They're not little babies anymore. Oh yeah. They kind of look like dogs. <laughs> oh weird. Ooh. Uh. They're a lot more disjointed, like their heads, like because usually like before they had that upside down baby with the things sprawling out of yeah. it, which is the the stuff of horrors. Yeah, yeah. And this doesn't. It seems more like a macabre d creation than anything else. Yeah. Uh, how I'm do you trying... how do you feel fighting humans in that game? That sort of surprised me at the beginning. I had forgotten about that i'm like oh i don't this is weird shooting dudes i had a problem with it until until i got to the point where there's this one section where you, you're passing back and you come across like oh wait there's four guys there all the guys throw put a gun to their head and just pull the trigger like oh no oh jeez. where it's, like, it's just like a mass suicide like right in front of you you're like oh no. <laughs> oh dead space <laughs> i <laughs> do not want to come back to this room now yeah Wow, but it does that great thing where it, it that event is just just shocking to watch, and then nothing happens with it. No, oh, like, it's just <laughs> like you would fully expect like something to come flying in. But the one, the probably the, my biggest gripe with it is when you're confronted with fighting something huge, the crowd control around that event is just infuriating. Where. Like, all right, I'm gonna use the demo. If these guys haven't played the demo, no. right. well, when I, it, it still happens in the game, but in the demo, you have this this drill head that's the size of a room. Oh, I've seen that in some of the trailers. Fly, flying around. Why do I have to deal with four 
continuously spawning necromorphs while I'm trying to wrangle this terrifying thing that's going on. Yeah. That's just one of probably four events in the game that is just pure chaos. Hmm. Where well. you're just frustrated, you can't figure out what to concentrate on, and it just... The second you feel like you've cleared the room enough to concentrate on the big thing, more enemies are coming at you. Oh, and you're like, oh. That's disappointing. I mean, because they did some of that stuff in Dead Space 1 and 2. Like, Dead Space 1, there was that giant room with the lasers in it, and you could go outside to take care of... There was some globe thing. But if they ever yeah. spawned enemies, it was one time, and there was maybe one or two kind of tougher enemies. It was never this... You know, modern warfare style, never ending. It was, it, yeah, it was never like you never hit that invisible walls where the enemies stop. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It just continued until you took in care, take took in, taking care of the big thing that's happening in the room, like the drill. Yeah. And that drill is the most terrifying thing because it is massive yeah. and just flailing away in the worst place possible hmm. in the tight quarters. Yeah. Ooh. And you, you lose track of where this thing is. That thing's killed me, I don't know, half a dozen times. <laughs> just backing into it because I'm trying to clear out as I'm going. And then the yeah. drill. C- oh, oh, there, I'm blown into pieces again. Yeah. Um, a few of the enemy types are, are kind of frustrating the fight. Uh, there's little squirrely quick ones. The twitchers are lightning fast now. Oh, jeez. Like, almost like teleport around quick. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And they, to make them even equally more terrifying, they put a flashlight on it. So you see this flashlight flailing around all Great. over the place. That's creepy. Um, but there is some stuff in that game that's just really cool. The arsenal, um, I still haven't figured out a way to make an effective weapon in that game. With the crafting system? With the crafting system. Yeah. Like the pre- some of the pre-made weapons are awesome, but nothing really seems to have... A focused punch like the original set of guns did. Yeah, mm. like they're like every gun had like I love the un- the universal ammo is the best thing ever. Yeah, because I don't have to worry about keeping certain stocks of ammo. Yeah, how my, many line like, gun bullets nice. do I have? Or like I have to save this for this type of situation and this yeah. for that. There's none of that really to worry about in this game. Um, the little add-on pieces. Um, like I have a like my pulse rifle has got a grenade launcher and I have a stasis mount to the grenades. Nice. So when I blow it up, everything's slow in the in the AOE effect. So wow. I can just sit there and pick it off. And every bullet from my pulse rifle does a little bit of stasis. So the more I shoot him, the more he slows down. Oh wow. Uh, and that those little add-ons I I really do enjoy. The acid one is by far the best. Oh really? <laughs> oh yeah. Just like Borderlands. <laughs> Yeah. You get one you get one shot onto them and it's gonna eat away at their limbs and you can just shoot like I most most of the game I've been using the, the conic tip on the on the uh the uh the military uh engine. Hmm. Because it, it's a very, very strong shotgun blast and it's the only thing that seems to knock limbs off in a shot. Hmm. And you don't have to be entirely too accurate with it. It almost sounds like it it would have been a more satisfying experience if they would have kept the the node system from two and just sort of said, well, you can pick either stasis or acid at this node, you know, and sort of start forking paths. And forking paths on that aspect, I think, yeah. would have been more satisfying. Yeah. Because then I would force you to, like, tear it all down and then build it back with a different... Yeah different line in the tree. Yeah, because you could always say, like, oh, these yeah. three nodes are going to be strength, and then one forks out to, you know, f- like, fire or, you know, whatever, and then it, it immediately forks back and does, you know, more damage. Yeah, that's nice. where, uh, I think that's where they might have missed it on that, but the the sheer variety of things you can concoct at this point is just, is madness. Yeah. I, there it, it seems almost limitless at this point what you can make. Yeah. That's awesome. But I still haven't found like the, the the bread and butter right now. My bread and butter is the conic, uh, the conic disperser, on the on the military grip with underneath the electrified Tesla engine with the line gun. Mm. So I have some crowd control, but none of them really shoot fast enough where enemies are rushing me. Yeah. So my second weapon is the pulse rifle with the grenade. Now actually, no, I'm using the rivet gun with the with another electrical burst thing. Hmm. But it, it's just, 
it's frustrating I can't find a weapon that I truly love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like in the first game it was the plasma the plasma plasma cutter mm-hmm. because it was just the most useful gun in the world and in that yes. particular universe. Yeah. There's two the I think the contact beam stole the show. Oh just yeah. because it was just equally satisfying to have enough nuts to sit there and let that thing charge up to release on an enemy. Yeah. And the reward <laughs> was you put it down. Yeah. Go to the next one. Well, I mean, that's I mean, that's sort of the you can have the the art, you know, about should the pluses and minuses of giving a crafting system. You know, if you if you as developers create all of the guns in the game, then you have a gun for every situation. But if you allow for crafting, then you might be a jack of all trades, master of none sort of thing. I yeah. think that's I think that's where it, it dies dies off a little bit for me right now. Like I, I've just been collecting blueprints in the game because there is a laundry list of guns that they're already pre configured for you, yeah. but with no like uh, add on attachments or uh, or um, or little circuits that to boost that boost the damage and whatever, mm-hmm. which you can craft those too to make every gun better. Oh, nice. But, um, and when you disassemble the gun, you get all those stuff back in your inventory. So oh, you're not good. losing. So if you just so you can keep want trying craft, stuff. I don't like this gun. I'm gonna disassemble it. Yeah. I'm gonna regain all those items that I use to make it. Yeah, that's awesome. good design. And I can reallocate all those parts to different guns. Yeah. Very so nice. it, and there's no cap on on what you can pick up or or anything <laughs> else. This dog is going crazy. Yeah, I just saw that in the video. Yeah. Of, Get down. Uh, but it, it, for the most part, it, it's it's a good conclusion to it. Yeah. Um, stuff happens, is yeah. pretty much all I can say. But uh, the co-op was a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to um, ask you, have you played any of that? I played co-op with Mackie through one of the co-op missions. Um and we had a necromorph spawning us in a tight corner, and instantly we both start putting the boots to him the second it hits the ground. <laughs> it was just curb stops. Just two people. It was it was like the best. And neither one of us said anything. We just instantly went from oh, he's da, boom, 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 like just yeah. pounding it, which was great. Um, the zero G stuff is awesome. Hmm. Uh, when once you get done with where you are. You'll yeah. be able. You'll find the skip, which just takes you to different wreckage points, like in that space. Nice. You can sprawl anywhere in that space. Great. Just go and just explore. Yeah. And okay. I really like that you kinesis. Uh, just so you know, if you see the O2 symbol on a wall, mm-hmm. you shoot the the casing off it and kinesis the tank towards you, and you just like crank it like in front of your face. Oh yeah, I've seen it. Like I did that once, where he sort of like hugged it and like huffed it, hugging yeah. and huffing. It's really cool, um, but yeah, that so you can pretty much stay out there indefinitely because those things are everywhere. Huh? But just floating around, exploring and finding stuff out in that, just going all you have full range of all this area. Nice. Which was really nice. Uh, I really I could spend I, if there was a game just me running around salvaging stuff, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> I did. I I've, I have three scavenge bots now. You'll probably find them in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just little thing like that's your up button. It has a little scavenge bot. You scan the area, you drop it down, and it just goes and collects resources for you. Yeah. So you just keep plugging these things down. And it keeps collecting bits and parts to upgrade your rigs and whatnot. So yeah, nice. Hmm. Uh, man, I'm trying to think what else uh, to say about the game, but I'm right back into it. Uh, I like it. Keep in the start menu. Keep track of how much you've done in each level. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. That. So you can keep track of like, and then it gives you like a check mark on what difficulty you've completed it at too. Yeah. So, cool. The only bad part I have to say about the the game, I do not know why they picked the worst font for the menus, oh, like the no. start menu and stuff. <laughs> I, uh. The the font in the first two games was great, and I know I'm complaining about fonts, but like, it is borderline unreadable. It yeah, is atrocious. Yeah, and I don't like the I, menu system either. Like the like the front end menu system uh, yeah. from getting into that you're like I do I really need to sit you watch you flip around these frozen <laughs> shoo, of, shoo. like you're giving me a headache I haven't shot yeah. a thing yet yeah wow uh, all right what else uh, you've been playing uh that's pretty much it all right Hannah what you got 
Oh, well, I got plenty of stuff. Um, I'm going to start with some of the stuff I've spent a little bit of time on, which was Half Minute Hero. Um, oh, nice. I, uh, I had it sitting around for PSP. I just never really plugged it in, so I figured I'd, you know, with all the sale that happened last week, I figured I'd toss it in. That game's weird. <laughs> that game is really weird, yeah. That game's super weird. <laughs> yeah, they, you... like, throw you into this world, and you're they're like, hey, you, we know you're level three. Go save the world. Yeah, go save the world, and you have 30 seconds to play an entire RPG. Yeah, yeah. which I, I love the concept. Um, yeah. It's, it's going to be one of those games where I'm like, you know, I'm bored. I got five minutes. Let's, let's play a couple RPGs. Yeah, you know? yeah let's, let's finish six RPGs. I really, like, I think it's a, a really interesting concept. I kind of wish I had it on uh, my phone. I don't think it's out for Android yet. No, or I don't think so. It'll ever come out for Android, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a really cool little game. I, I love the concept. I like the the uh, sprites are really interesting too because they don't yeah. look like traditional eight bit sprites. There's something about them that's a little. I think like the pixels are a little wider than usual. Mm-hmm. Well, it's got this great, like, tongue-in-cheek, let's make fun of JRPGs humor yes, to it. Yes, which I greatly appreciate. Yeah. Because, um, man, JRPGs. Are so <laughs> yeah. <funny. laughs> yeah, JRPGs. Yeah, man. I've, we've all been there. Um, and, yeah, so, you know, played a little bit of that. Uh, I also... I finally got a wireless PC adapter for my 360 controller, mm. and so I was able to pop in Saints Row the Third and play it like a human being. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, and man, that game. See, I, I think I have more fun with that game over like GTA, like just going around and destroying stuff because you're kind of expected to in Saints Row. Yeah, you're encouraged it's... to to do as much dumb stuff as possible. Yeah, and, you know, I had I had kind of a crummy day yesterday, so I'm like, you know, I'm going to load up some Saints Row. I'm going to see how much damage I can do to the city before the cops finally take me down. I'm going to blow up everything. Yeah, and I, I forgot I forgot about those uh, helicopters that basically act as mobile sniping platforms for those oh, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, God. I was like, what's that red? T- oh, I'm dead now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's really the difference, you know, between every other open world game in Saints Row the the third and uh, first and second for that much for that matter but yeah. in saints row if you decide to blow up everything in the world the game is right there alongside with you cheering yep. you on and in a lot yes. of other open world games are like oh no man the cops are coming oh you did something bad and saints row third is like blow up more stuff that thing <laughs> looks like it get- blows up real good the cops yeah, I don't remember like, the cops ever running. being an issue in that game either. Oh, they weren't an issue. It was just I wasn't ex- like had I known the helicopter was there, had I been listening rather than you know trying to shoot other cops. Yeah, uh, I probably would have been like, oh well, dead. Yeah. Um, and okay. just yeah, that was God, that's that a game. That so game's good. a great stress reliever. Like, yeah, just, it really is. It's just fun. Yeah, you can't go I, wrong. With- the one thing that just always that probably my favorite opening sequence of any game is that bank robbery. It's oh, just, or you're just uh, hanging off that vault. Unbelievable! Yeah, you're yeah. in the ridiculous uh, Johnny Gat. Heads, the giant head. And you're you're hanging off like Matrix style off the back, just winging out shots yeah. and stuff, and just yep. it's you know, just that, like amazing. We were talking about Dead Space 3's opening. That Saints Row the Third is probably going to be one of my favorites of this gen too. Yeah, and that's that's just so much fun. Um, I love hopping on the motorcycle. I think my favorite feature of the driving in that game is the cruise control. Yeah, but that's just that's just pop on the cruise control. Look, now I can aim properly instead of yeah. having to hold down twelve buttons. Yeah, and that's that's what I really liked about um, Sleeping Dogs too. Is when you aimed yeah. out of the window, it slowed everything way down, so you can actually yeah. take your time and like pop out people's tires instead of being like, oh, now I two seconds later I hit a wall. Yeah. Well, that yeah, and, since, and, and since Saints Row the Third, I don't want to steal another car unless I can jump through the window and get right into the driver's seat. Yeah, yeah. Outside yep. of that, I, I think Jack and Cars just takes too long. Yeah, yep. yeah. And funny you mentioned uh, Sleeping Dogs, Boston, because that's the reason I bought the controller adapter for my PC so I could play that properly. And oh, I was like, man. Oh wait, I have Saints Row the Third installed still. Well, just like five minutes of that, and then I'll go to Sleeping yeah. Dogs. That that never happened. Oh man, Sleeping Dogs. <laughs> I've seen some screenshots. That looks beautiful on PC. Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't know how beautiful it's going to look on a five-year-old machine, but you it know. seems like it scales pretty well. 
It seems to like it still looks really good. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've been happy the, the like forty five minutes I played of it. I was nice. pretty happy with it. Um, but the other uh, two games I've been playing first was Final Fantasy Tactics: War of the Lions. Oh yeah, another PSP game I had sitting around, and I've been itching to get into another uh, tactics like turn based strategy game because of XCOM. Well, welcome and, to the best. Yeah, and I think I found it. <laughs> Yeah. And the best part was I, can, I I played like hundreds of hours of Tactics Advance back in the day. Mm -hmm. So this was just like settling into like a like a a comfort zone. I already yeah. know what I'm doing in this game. Yep. The menus are a little different, but they're not different enough to where it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Um and like I just Man, it's awesome. <laughs> it's, the it's... only the only downside is like I'm I keep coming way too close to losing people. Because it's not like uh, Tactics Advance where it's like, oh, they're just knocked out. You know, they'll be fine at the end of the round as long as you're not in a certain zone. Yeah. This is, no, you have three turns. Yeah, you have three turns to go over and pick them up or they turn into a crystal. Yeah. Uh, and then you can absorb their abilities if you pick up their crystal or the crystal disappears and they're gone forever. Yeah. Ooh. Which <laughs> is just brutal. Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty fair. I mean, if you keep your, your party pretty close and you, you keep a lot of items on other people, then it's not yeah. bad, but you're still playing with fire. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And that's I kind of yeah. like that little bit of danger in there. Mm -hmm. um, God, but I, I like that so the difference... I like that the difficulty isn't artificial like it was in uh, Tactics Advance because a lot of the difficulty from Tactics Advance pulled from the judge system and like, yeah. oh, you can't use swords or knives this round. And it's like, well, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the the best part about this game is I don't even remember what they call it in the War of the Lions version, but the mathematician, they called it originally. And basically the that party member, you you won't get it until way later in the game, but yeah, um, this game encourages you at every turn to completely break it. Nice. Um, especially since there are kind of a couple of BS boss fights at some point. That's what I've heard. Yeah, save often. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, there's two famous boss fights where it's like, oh, my... Uh, oh, there's a boss fight here. That should be pretty easy. Oh, he just changed into a giant monster. Oh, and it's still just me. Okay, yeah. great. Um, uh, there, there's So the mathematician, basically, you cast spells... Uh, that affect people depending on certain stats. So, Ooh. like, oh, if they're a zodiac sign, this, they're dead. If they're oh, on man. a tile that its height is divisible by three, they're dead. <laughs> uh, if their level is divisible by five, they're dead. Nice. What? Well, that's it's classic amazing. Final Fantasy. Yeah, it's 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 inc it. There's so much content to this game too. I can't I can't recommend enough when you um. When you get near the ending of the game, mm -hmm. um, there's a definite ending, and once you're done, it the game is sort of done. But it'll you can reload your last save, and and you'll be fine. There's so much stuff at the end of this game, like oh, do you want to get Cloud in your party? Great, oh, you nice. can do that. Do you want to get a giant robot in your party? Yeah, you do. Yes. Um, that, that answer is always yes. Do yeah. you want to? Uh, what, what, do you to wanna, always do? Do you want a giant robot? Yes. Yes. Always. Yeah. Um, there's an incredible dungeon called the Deep Dungeon that, um, okay. it's like 12 levels or so, and each level is pitch black as soon as you start it, but after you kill an enemy and they turn into a crystal, it brightens the place up a little bit. So, okay. like, every, every enemy you, you kill brightens up the place a little bit more so you can find the exit. And there's some sweet loot in there. There's just, nice. as you So get, if you pick up the crystals, does it get dark again? Yep. Oh, <laughs> and so there's so much stuff in this game. Uh, in the fourth chapter, there's only four chapters, but yeah. in the fourth chapter, there's so much uh, crazy side stuff that just pull up a guide and just start doing crazy stuff. That's, That's what I plan on doing. I'm yeah, kind of I'm reserving this game as like my commuting game because every battle takes about half hour, forty five minutes. Yeah, and it, it it works out well. Those battles get a lot faster. As you start, so the best part about any Final Fantasy or any SRPG game mm -hmm. that lets you mix is mixing and matching skills. So it's like, yeah. oh well, I'm gonna dual wield two weapons like a ninja. Oh, except I can wear heavy armor because I'm a um, I'm a knight and I'm equipping two two-handed weapons. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, I so just did three thousand damage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
God, that game is so good. I, I really, yeah, I can't wait to dig in a lot, like yeah. a lot deeper into it. Because right now I've got like everybody at like level two, and I'm still going up against guys that are like level three, and like just that little level gap there is enough to like kind of shut me down every once in a while. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. all right, there's more <laughs> people dead. I'm just gonna reload. <laughs> and I'm I'm really glad you're playing the PSP one because they fixed the translation. So it's yeah. one of the best political intrigue stories I've ever experienced. Yeah, and it's, it seems to be rounding out quite nicely. Yeah, and and just the seeing the twists and the turns and the backstabs throughout the whole game, and finally the translation yeah. reflects that as, oh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, and the last game I've been playing has been Borderlands 2, because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> um, and I am continuing, I finally, so I, I, I have, do, I, I'm playing on PC. Mm -hmm. And when the PC version initially came out, there was a fun little trick you could do to get a buttload of golden keys. Yeah. And I'm being the curious type, decided, oh, that doesn't look too hard. I'm going to see if I can. Oh yeah, that totally worked. Wow, that's a lot of golden keys. Yeah, I have like do with I, those. I have like two thousand golden keys now. Okay. Well, no, I only I only did like I think my total was like two hundred and fifty-five, and I'm still yeah. above two hundred. I haven't used a ton of them. Hi. Yeah. Simply to see if I could do it. It was and pretty frankly, easy. <laughs> it, well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it, I can't. I can't judge you because I took the secret path to get into the the hit or the in uh, what you call it, uh, Pirates Booty DLC. Oh, okay. After you you beat the Leviathan, you can jump up its invisible body and get to the point where you can clip through the wall back into that vault room. Oh jeez. Oh nice. It takes about twenty minutes. Oh, I've man. done it. I don't know how many times. Jeez. Yeah. Just to open more chests. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the that's the fun part. Like, I, see, I, I I didn't use it. Like, I avoid using it. I would use the golden keys. Like, I'd use five maybe every twenty levels mm -hmm. when I first started. So I like resisted. But now that I'm in true vault hunter mode, I'm kind of like, all right, well, I need to get over this gap. I need to get to sanctuary. So I got to sa like I went to sanctuary in normal mode. Got a bunch of you know purple weapons. Used three or four keys. And luckily, it was enough to get me into sanctuary in troop vault hunter mode. And like once you're there, it's a lot better. Yeah. Like it's significantly less like soul crushing. You know, like oh, I'm dying every five feet because I didn't see that guy to the the right end up. Mm -hmm. So it's it's getting a lot better. Um, I'm still having a bit of trouble with the occasional boss fight, but I think that's intentional. Um, I think that's it, I, I need. I just need people to play with. Is what it comes down to, and everybody I know has plowed through this game on PC already. Ah, so if anybody's out there and you're looking for uh, <laughs> someone to play with, forums assemble. Yeah, so hop on on there. But uh, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Uh, I played more Sims Three. I I have not had much time to play much this week. I played a little bit more Sims Three, and as is expected, the. Uh, criminal married to the cop uh, household fell apart Ooh, uh, what happened? No. <laughs> that ended poorly uh, they just they eventually came to terms and then came to blows uh, and then after having a fist fight uh, I decided to kind of delete that house because <laughs> that was that was pretty much as far as it was going to go so I started a new family that would actually get to get, get along together and I'm playing that every once in a while but I've mm, seen that... I've seen through my dream to its conclusion, and it turned out poorly as expected. Um, uh, played more Nino Kuni. I think uh, I just rounded out 19 hours uh, earlier okay. today. Um, this game is really great. Uh, my girlfriend and I are really enjoying it. I'm I really 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 wish uh, there was couch co-op on this game because I think this is one game that I would one RPG I would really like to play with somebody else. Um, yeah. and there are so few JRPGs like that um, yeah. it's just uh, what it's a really solid really great JRPG you know the same thing that I can say about the Dragon Quest games where it's just like these are good RPGs you know yeah. they're, they're good at what they do they're mm -hmm. solid they're not going to revitalize the genre it's just a good great game I'm I'm having a great time with and I think a lot of what saves um, Nino Kuni from being, you know, the the prototypical JRPG is um, the a lot of really great side quests. Um, nice. The Pokemon style familiar system that you're Ooh. just gathering 
people to fight for you. You know, you you have a chance when you defeat an enemy um, that it could fall in love with you. Um, and <laughs> when it falls in love with you, it is a kid's game. Uh, nice. When it falls in love with you, you can sort of serenade it and and have it join your party. Um, nice. I think right now I have like 35 familiars or something. Um, <laughs> is there a cap on how many? Or is it just like you can get them all? There's a cap on... So there's this... Um, God, I don't even remember what they call it. There's basically a familiar... I think it's called the Familiar Retreat. Um, and it's basically where you store your familiars. Um, and there's a cap of 400 in there. So I don't know if that means there's 400 familiars or that just means... You That's can only have up to 400. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. seem like you can get multiples of the same familiar. Like, once you've captured one, that that's pretty much it. I think, because you can evolve your familiars after they've hit a certain level. Okay. So, like, a familiar hit, like, level 15, let's say, and then you can feed it this gem. It uh, it evolves it at, at that point. It That goes down to level 1, and I think at that point you can recapture the original one that you had, you know, the de-evolved okay, cause, form. Because it opens that slot up, and yeah, when you were saying yeah. Pokemon style, you weren't kidding. No, I mean, it is, <laughs> or, and then there's, it seems, I haven't gotten to this point yet, but it seems like there's a third evolution, and you can pick sort of <laughs> one of two pathways. Um, of course but I don't, is. I don't know what that, that is yet. Um, so nice. that, that helps a lot, because you can sort of mix and match uh, a bunch of stuff, and one of the yeah. real big saving graces of this game is the boss battles, um, and it reminds me a lot of um, Lost Odyssey, because these really? boss battles are not messing around. Uh, like, if a uh, if um, uh, the boss starts winding up for a big attack, everybody needs to defend, or everybody's dead. Really? Um, yeah. Like it doesn't. It, it finally, thankfully, the game gave me an. Uh, 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 button options where I can hit uh, square and everybody will defend, or hit triangle and everybody will attack. Um, God, every RPG needs those. Yes, for real. <laughs> um, and it's it's really great because the bosses aren't, you know, grinding a little bit is going to help you a little bit, but you need to be very cognizant of, you know, if this boss is going to use a fire spell, it's probably going to you know, spit fire out of it in a small cone, you mm -hmm. need to just get behind it. Yeah. You know, or this boss has a giant shield in its front, maybe you should get around behind it and then start smacking around. So, I mean, some there's some simple stuff like that, but it's really this dance of, let's try and do a whole bunch of damage. Oh boy, here comes a special attack. Let's either defend or let's try and mitigate it heal back up a little bit, and then get back in. So it's not just, I'm going to keep hitting X for five minutes, and yay, the boss is dead, hooray. You know, it's yeah. it's nothing like that. It's really, mm -hmm. it, it really helps out, because normal enemies are, are like that. You know, for a lot of them, you can just keep telling your familiar to attack, and hooray, they're dead. But yeah, it's kind of nice to see, and it's really rewarding when you finish a boss fight, because it's like, man, I really kind of, tooth and nail got my way through that and yeah that's and your point about lost odyssey it's the exact same way and yeah you can yeah. keep hitting x and keep attacking to get through these fights mm -hmm. but the real fun in coming it comes in finding the critical path and finding the shortest it's figuring out combination from a to b yeah. yeah that's what i loved about lost odyssey and that's what i love about this this game is boss battles as a puzzle you know, yeah, like yeah, that's you a can, great concept. Yeah, you can sort of mash your way through it, and that's not really fun. Or you can kind of break the game, find their weakness, and then kind of exploit it and just really have a great time. Yeah, that nice. was the, the biggest thing that I liked was using their ultimate techniques that would do the most amount of damage mm -hmm. to their weakness, and yeah, that was yeah. usually meteor storm <clears throat> equals win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm so I'm just, moons. I'm really enjoying this game, and and my girlfriend nice. and I are really enjoying sitting there and playing it. And it's funny in kind of a kid's goofy way, and sort of a this is Japanese and kind of weird way. And it's yeah. just it's fun, you know. I haven't had an RPG really suck me in like this in in a while, you know. I've had RPGs where it's like, yeah, this is fine, this is fun, it's okay. Yeah. But I, I really like it. God, is it beautiful? And the soundtrack, oh man, just incredible um and the last game i played uh my copy of uh fire emblem awakening finally showed up 
Uh, after the delays and, and mass outages, because this game is selling way better than Nintendo thinks, because they forget people want Fire Emblem games. Yeah, sounds um, like a Nintendo move. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I played four hours of this uh, so far, um, and it is, this is my first Fire Emblem game, um, and it is really good, um, and I will get out in front of everybody complaining to me and telling me I'm playing the game wrong. I did not turn classic mode on. Um, so the, is, the uh, so basically the, the 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 historic uh, Fire Emblem games have been, if one of your party members fall in battle, they are gone forever. Oh, okay. there's no I knew option. That. I wasn't sure if that was it or not. Yeah, that so that's classic mode is if their hit, if their health gets to zero, you can't bring them back, can't get them back up. They are gone forever and ever. Good Amen. good night. <laughs> um, so in this game, they said, well. Do you want to play classic mode or do you want to play? I think they call it casual. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> That's a bit they of said, a jab. There's a little twist of the knife. Yeah, and yeah. they said, "Well, do you want to play casual?" And the your party member will fall for the entirety of the battle, but they'll come back to life after the battle. And without hesitation, I said, "Yes, I would like to play that because I don't have a lot of time." So I kind of just want to enjoy a game and not really go out of my way to punish myself while playing a game. And I, I, I. I explain this on the show because I understand that that's part of the appeal for a lot of people of the Fire Emblem games is this heightened sense of, holy crap, I'm just like, I'm on the razor's edge here, and if something goes wrong, I could lose my entire party. But I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't derive a lot of my fun out of that in a lot of these SRPGs. You know, if somebody, if somebody falls... That's great. Like some say, somebody gets a crit on one of my party members. I don't want to be punished for a dice roll. You yeah. know, I'd be I I would be more than willing to be punished for playing it stupid. But mm -hmm. I I don't want to be punished for you know oh this this guy was level two got attacked by a level four guy and got critted for fifty five damage when he has ten health. You yeah. know, like at that point, that's. To me is is not fun. I, I feel like I'm getting punished, but um, yeah. game seems great so far. Um, story seems fine. Seems like a standard. This country is fighting with this country. Oh no, a war! Um, <laughs> you know the standard SRPG thing. You know it, it, you're not in an SRPG for the story. Typically, you're yeah. you're in it for the battle system. Yeah. Oh, um, but man, is the 3D great in this game? Really? I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because especially the cutscenes, like these sort of cell animated anime style cutscenes, holy crap, are they amazing. Like really great sense of depth, really great movement in them that yeah. they're specifically made to not make you vomit. That's um, good. So yeah, that's a always a bonus. Yeah, I mean, you, you <laughs> can't go wrong with that. Right? <laughs> um, and just... Just not only a really great looking game, but it, it's great to see a game with really great 3D that uh, focuses on not. I mean, there's only been one cutscene where somebody's like reaching out towards the screen, but the rest yeah. of it is really making depth. Uh, and nice. and you know, if it's this giant area that you're in, you know, it the the distance is going to be way far in the back and your character is going to be tiny and then out in front in the 3D plane is going to be you know the character portraits and the the text box um and there are very few 3DS games that do 3D well in mm -hmm. in the way that I I'm sort of looking forward to turning it on every once in a while you know like something happening and I'm uh, sliding the 3DS slider like ooh, 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 ooh you know like you, you don't get many games like that you're just sort of like oh I turn that on and I'm just nauseous what is going yeah, on yeah i think that's the the big my biggest gripe with 3d it's not about popping out it's about drawing in yeah it's like it's about, pulling you into the screen versus yeah. pulling things out of the screen like yeah, it's I, about, it's, that's the thing that i loved about a lot of like uh was the the thing with avatar, why avatar looked great because it didn't have this stuff floating out in front of you it yeah. had it Pushed back. Yeah, it's really actually about like displaying pulled depth. like the back of the screen and like just yeah. drawed it out. Yeah, you know? yeah, and that, that's, that's what sent me on 3D overall. And that's why I've always said I would really like um, a 3D um, Assassin's Creed game. 
Because oh, to be able to get <laughs> depth inside that world would be incredible. Oh, yeah. it really would be. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping to to play Fire Emblem a bunch more. You know, this this is one great thing about an SRPG on a handheld is I can sort of put it on my my bedside table and kind of play it. You know, before going to bed, and it's not yeah, you know, that's it's not anything crazy. Tactics. Yeah, unfortunately, it's on my my XL, so it's kind of big, um, <laughs> and that means the 3D is a little bit harder to see than on the the, the normal 3DS. But it seems really great, and it, as my first Fire Emblem game, I'm really enjoying it. I I don't know how it stacks up to all the rest of them, but I like a good SRPG, so we don't get yeah. very many of them. So yeah, uh, and that's all I've been playing. So let's take our first break. Sounds good. Right, I'm Sweet. Away for a minute. Oh right, man, I gotta hit the bathroom. Oh, I will be back. Yeah, there's something to be said for a good tactics RPG. It's a good wind down because it makes you think and it tires you out a little bit. All right. <clears throat> Hi to everyone in chat. Um, if you're in there, you know, f feel free to uh, start chatting with us. I finally have chat up, so it finally decided to load. So I just pulled the trigger on that uh, three terabyte external. Nice. Yeah, I had to. It's just like uh, I'm never gonna see a deal that good again. How much was it? One oh nine. Yeah. 
Yeah. Who made it? Um, yeah. Uh, it's Western Digital. Nice. My yeah, favorite so it's of not the like an off companies. brand. Oh, that's like that's literally more than three times the storage of my actual computer. <laughs> it's usually and a good sign that that's a smart purchase. Yeah. And I mean I just have so much I have so much old stuff that I should have deleted, but I don't want to. Yeah. Because it's all like old PSD files for like Photoshop projects and like stuff I know I'm gonna like load up in ten years somehow. And yeah. go, oh, yeah, I should totally keep working on this. <laughs> oh, yeah, Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> remember when that was a thing? Yeah, I remember Photoshop. Man, it's a shame what happened to Adobe. Yeah. Because that's going to happen eventually. Yeah. The way they've been going. I don't know, um, their subscription service is actually really good, and we've migrated over to that at, at my job. I've heard really great things about that, and if they keep going with that, I, I see a really good future for them. Yeah. And I see them paving the way for other software companies. And honestly, like, what what we were looking at was, you know, if we buy a new copy of Photoshop, it's a couple of hundred bucks if you're doing an upgrade, and if not, then it's oh, a lot yeah. more money. Um, or we can spread that cost over however long at $20 a month for mm -hmm. one person, you know, like one yeah. of our graphic designers. And they're always going to be running the newest version. So we don't yeah. have to pay for you know, the next upgrade, you know, like CS7 comes out. Nope. Okay, let's spend now another was, $700. Yeah, now is the 7 um, or uh, I'm sorry, is the 20 bucks is that for the full suite or is that just for Photoshop? So $20 is for everything Adobe makes. That's hot. Yeah, like you're getting Audition, you're getting Light Lightroom. They make Lightroom. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're that's getting, their sub Photoshop. Yeah, you're getting like you're even like getting Flash Develop or not yeah, Flash Develop, yeah, Flash you, Builder. Yeah, you're getting Flash, um, Illustrator, Fireworks. I mean, you're getting everything. Ah, fireworks sucks. Yeah, it does, but <laughs> you're getting it. I miss Image Ready. Did you ever use that? No, I never did. It was an add-on to Photoshop that was... It was basically Fireworks, oh, but okay. it worked really... It worked well. Like, hmm. Fireworks, in my mind, is just a giant pile yeah. where, like, I still have... Um, I have CS3. I used to use uh, Photoshop 8 because yeah. it had Image Ready, and Image Ready was... It was perfect for slicing up an image and turning it up into a website. Oh, And that's, yeah, like, yeah. that's how I learned all my web development stuff was through Image Ready. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, for twenty bucks a month, like that's yeah, a great price, you and you get that. everything. Yeah, I also uh, picked. I picked up uh, Red Dead Redemption uh, Game of the Year Edition. It was on sale for twenty on Amazon the other day. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, let's pull the trigger on that because I'm not gonna be able to buy anything for like a year. Well, and that's a lot of games <laughs> there too. Yeah, so I figured get some get some good game in, and you know, yeah, but man, I, I just I'm really we finally set a date for the wedding too. Nice. So I got a lot of money to spend in the next year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's gonna. It's all gonna be good though. So it's uh, we, we the place we picked for the actual reception is awesome. Oh really? It, it, we get the whole place for ourselves. Ooh. There's no other weddings happening. There's no anything else happening there. That's Plus very it nice. has a heated outdoor area, and we're doing our, our dates in March of 2014. So oh, that'll be. So you have the outdoor nicer. area, so the people that, you know, want to go outside and hang out or maybe, you know, have a cigarette or something or, or enjoy the view even yeah. can go out and do that without, you know, freezing their butts off. Yeah. Um, and it's, like, got, like, an Irish pub look to it, which is awesome. Ooh, nice. As it's it's going to be fun. I'm really, really looking forward to that day, and I, have to, I still have to assign someone to feed me drinks that whole day. Yeah. <laughs> So like, look, I'm not gonna be able to escape the throngs of people. I need you in every like half hour intervals. Just bring me a whiskey. That's yeah. all I need. That's all I require <laughs> of you. Uh, so I'm looking at this Adobe Creative Cloud stuff. And I forgot uh -huh. there's some exclusive features with it too, <coughs> like Dreamweaver, Illustrator, and something else has exclusive features uh, with nice. the cloud. So does Photoshop. You even get stuff like Adobe Muse, which is their make web pages without writing code stuff. Yeah, that stuff's fun, but I tend to not trust it because yeah. I've seen what Dreamweaver does on the back end when you start to create like visual stuff in there. Yeah. That it code just, is hideous. It throws up code. Yeah, and especially some of the JavaScript stuff it does is just disgusting. Adobe Prelude. That's weird. I have no idea what that is. An 
ingest nearly any file based format and begin logging immediately with searchable markers that flow through post production, allowing you to work faster and stay organized. That sounds, it sounds great. like it's like GitHub for <laughs> like uh, images. <laughs> so it's so it's Adobe's version of GitHub for visual. Yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna work. Yeah, that's not gonna <laughs> last. Like the beauty of GitHub is its simplicity. The fact yeah, that exactly. you can run it from command line. Yeah, you just feed you just feed stuff into it and it works. Yep. Now we use Git repositories at my job, and it's always fun because uh, we we have to we actually have two repositories set up because of the mm. bug tracking software we use. Oh yeah. It's it's kind of a mess, and our lead developer is working on fixing it, and it's uh, it's gonna be nice. We used to use Git until one of the first things um, that I did when I got there. One of my first big projects was in, to install Microsoft TFS Team Foundation Service. I never heard of that one. Um, it's pretty much it it rolls together um, like a bug tracker and code, uh, you know, you know work code collaboration and and. Yeah. You know, GitHub and um, automated code testing. Oh, uh, okay. It's it honestly, it's pretty expensive, but man, when that thing gets set up and and somebody takes the time to really, like a, a an engineer gets in there and takes the time to set up all that stuff, man, it is it is actually pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah, exciting stuff. I don't oh. where knobs went. I think he's in the uh, the lavatories. Uh, One thing I'm not looking forward to is figuring out my internet situation in the new place because I have two options, Comcast and AT&T, and those are both a nightmare. We have to yeah. AT&T now, and they're not bad. Oh. I have AT&T now, and I really dislike their speeds, and I dislike their pricing structure. And oh. I, dislike their hard I don't like their hardware. I don't like anything about yeah. them. And Ooh. Comcast is just... I, I mean, I did the math on it. If you get the... Like the deal they have going now, if you get the twenty meg down, mm -hmm. you're paying oh, over the life of the plan. If I were to just get like the flat priced, um, what is it like six megs down? Yeah. Versus the deal where it scales, it does like a graduated payment, yeah. so you pay thirty and then forty five, and then they determine your rate up to like sixty two dollars for the last year. Mm -hmm. If even with the max price of like sixty two dollars for that last year, over the whole life of the plan, you're only paying fifty dollars more total. Oh wow! Four, triple the speed. So that's not bad. I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. It's still a buttload of money. And that's for a fat pipe too. Minutes. That is that is gonna be nice. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah. Hey, Nobs is back. All right. Hey, all right. You guys ready to do the next segment? <laughs> Just once, I would like to flush that toilet, and not clog it. Just once. <laughs> Welcome to the live stream, everyone. Uh, Just I feel your pain. <laughs> I've been there. Once, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Oh, Boston, have you been uh, reading Injustice? No, I picked up the first issue. I've been reading um, All New X Men and then the New 52 Batman. Yeah, the All New X Men's are really good so far. It's I can't really. Wait for it. I haven't uh, started issue seven yet, but I, I pretty much. Ooh, it's out? Yeah, it came out Tuesday. Ooh, um, all right. I know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I mean, I, as I'm really glad I signed up for that Comicsology um, weekly email thing because nice. not only does yeah. the app alert me where it's like, "Hey, an all new X Men is out. Why don't you spend more money?" Um, but it's also, you know, these first issues are out or these are notable issues. Yeah, I get those too. I can't wait to keep chewing through the new Batman stuff though, because when I saw what's happening with the Joker, I. Had to figure out where that starts and start reading that. <laughs> what with the Joker in Injustice? No, the Joker in Batman, the Death of the Family stuff. Oh, I haven't read any of that. Oh man, I'm not a big Batman guy though. I'm usually not either, but this looks pretty fucked up. Uh, all <laughs> yes. I know is is from reading Injustice, the, the four issues. I thank God they're only ninety nine cents. But yeah, dude, just. Superman losing his poops is the best thing ever. Amazing. And actually, I'm I'm excited to check this game out now. It seems nice. pretty cool. You know, MK9 was great. So I mean, if you if can... they can handle that story mode like the same way they did with uh, MK9. Oh, I'm sold. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I there was an interview that um one of the lead designers on Injustice had with uh, Jeff Gersman over at Giant Bomb. They did a video interview last week, two weeks ago, and they, they called out that story mode specifically, saying like, hey, we're going to keep trying to do that because everybody loved that. 
nice. because they actually did a really good job on it. Well, no, they, but the, the thing that the ingenious part about it is they got you to play with every character. Mm-hmm. It just it made it and made it a good story mode. Well, and it was a good training mode at the same time too. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, you guys, you guys ready, ready for this? Yep, yep, yep. All right, ready in three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. We got releases this week: downloadable games, Special Forces Team X for XBLA. That's a lot of X. Oh, oh yeah, X all over it. X souls, X trolls. For two, tw- uh, twelve hundred points. Sly Cooper: Thieves in Time for the PS3. That's a cross buy for forty dollars. That's a pretty nice. good price. It also is cross save. So if you're that's even better. You're playing on yeah. your PS3 and you want to play it somewhere else. They have to find the a way to ex- exploit that for almost everything now because that yeah. that makes that a really neat machine. Well, I mean, for forty bucks you get the PS3 and Vita copy and both games save across each other. Like, why wouldn't you buy the PS3 version? I, I mean, yeah. that's, you know? the, the the amazing thing is is they're, they're what seven years into this council and they're fig- finally figuring out something cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all PSN Final Fantasy games are half off. That's right. Um, if you're interested in playing Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions, it's only like five dollars right now. Yeah, and that is a steal for that game. Yeah. And oh, just just buy all of them. Yeah, every yeah. single one of them. But They're don't buy great. the PS1 versions of Final Fantasy five or six. Those are bad. yes. Avoid those. Yeah. But those are like ten bucks. So avoid those versions. anyway. Yeah. All right. Uh, U.S. release for the week of February twelfth. 2013 Aliens Colonial Marines for the PlayStation 360 and PC. Man, I hope I'm that's a, good. I'm a coin flip away either picking this up or Crisis 3. I would go with Crisis 3 because that's a known... You know Crisis 3 is going to be good. Yeah. I know, but this is Gearbox. Yeah, but yeah. it's but it's Aliens. Who's made a good Aliens game? Mm. Yeah. The Jaguar? <laughs> yeah. yeah, do the math. Eh, wink. I don't know. Uh, I've been uh, I'm once bit with Duke Nukem, so I I, I don't know. Yeah, Even though I know really that wasn't their, their game, yeah, but yeah. I wouldn't hold it against them. They yeah. gave me that little bit of hope and just mm. crushed it. Mm. Here's hoping. But yeah. Oh, on this other sidebar, apparently I love games made by V Game Studios that start with the letter V. Yeah. Do you ever notice that? Visceral. Volition, Volition. Visceral. And uh, Vigil. Vigil. So I'm going to start a video game company called uh, Vava Voom Games. Man, I love it. <laughs> Best games ever. Plus you don't suck as voodoo. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm going to make a new voodoo, UK, Vince. <laughs> UK release for the week of February 8th, 2013. That is Dead Space 3 for the PlayStation 3, 360, and PC. All right, let's move on to news stories. I'm going to let the Hannah take this first one because he is super excited uh, about the first one. The first gameplay I, video has been released for Wasteland 2. Yeah, uh, I, I, this wasn't on my radar in the least. I had heard about it, and I was like, that's awesome. They're going to make another Wasteland game, you know, finally give the... You know the the progenitor of the Fallout series. It's rightful due. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Everyone else is gonna enjoy it. I have no interest in it whatsoever. And then I saw this video, and now I am like frothing at the mouth for this game because mm-hmm. it looks super hot. It does. Um, so the the whole thing looks it, it looks like what I think everyone was expecting out of the original Fallout Three. Um, yeah. That before it was gonna be made by uh, Bethesda. This is, you have your little squad of dudes, and you're moving around a hex-based um, grid, uh, a map. It's isometric. And it, the combat system, the reason I got so excited about this is because the combat system looks like a hex-based XCOM. Yeah. So instead <laughs> of a square grid, you're on a hex grid, which gives you a lot more, in my opinion, options um, for movement and for you know cover and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so... It's it's this really good looking hybrid. Uh, it it looks like a, a strategy RPG set in the Fallout universe. Mm-hmm. Because for for those that don't know, Wasteland was made by a lot of the same people that made Fallout. But when they went to make Fallout, um, they couldn't get the rights to the Wasteland stuff, so yeah. they ended up kind of just 
doing an homage to that universe and kind of like changing the names of a few things. Because I think Wasteland started out as a pen and paper game, right? I believe I believe it did. I can't yeah. say one way or the other. I know about the PC game. Yeah. Um, um, and you're looking at in this game, you've got individualized character creation. Uh, you can create all your squad members to uh, your preferences. Uh, their their new um, like attribute system. I love the name of it. It's the classic system. It's coordination, luck, awareness, strength, speed, intelligence, and charisma. Amazing. Which are, <laughs> that's awesome. Those are the cardinal stats. Yeah. You know, a coordination is just agility. You know, yeah. uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and for anyone who's interested, the the video is going to be up on the uh, in the show notes on TVGP.tv, and I urge everyone to check it out. I'll probably even tack it onto the uh, the the forum post for this episode because it yeah. is it's pretty it's impressive, really good. And I think my favorite moment in the the video is there's this point where you know they show you the combat system at first, and then they start showing you like the skill checks against things in the environment. So you can do a perception check against an enemy and see, like, their cone of vision. Mm. So if you walk in front of that cone of vision, combat starts and it flips into a turn-based mode. So you, you know, you spend action points to move around the grid and get into cover and fire shots and all this stuff. Um, but the, the coolest thing was if you're still, if you haven't initiated combat yet, you can do an ambush move and you can select multiple members of your squad and have them all fire at an enemy at once and end the fight before it even begins. That's pretty cool. That, really? that was I, the minute I saw that I was like, yeah, I'm buying this game. That's all. <laughs> Take I'm my do. money. Yeah, and I, I, you know, there's part of me that now wishes I really would have backed this when it was originally a Kickstarter. But yeah. you know what? Someone's got to be left over to help them make profit. So yeah, I will, exactly. I will gladly be that portion of the audience. Yeah. So I, we'll probably. I'm my interest is definitely peaked. So I, I think we'll be following this as it as it continues here. It seems pretty cool. So Yeah. Uh, before we move on to the next news story, I uh, want to uh, repeat what Pseudonym in the chat uh, says. Uh, says that uh, apparently PSN sales are region specific. Uh, so if you're one of the listeners that are listening uh, outside of North America, sorry, that that sucks. But, really? but War of the Lions is still really good. And if it's 10 bucks, yeah. that's still a steal. Yeah. Uh, next news story here, Half-Life and Portal movies uh, are in talks between Valve and J.J. Abrams. Uh, I guess uh, they've started working together to figure out if there's, a, if there's a way that they can do Half-Life and Portal movies, which is probably the best way to go do it by saying, hey, let's sit down before we do anything and let's say, hey, can we make a movie out of this stuff? Instead of just saying, yeah. I don't know, here's $50 million, can you guys make something? Oh, it's bad? Oh, weird. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, if you're going to have anybody behind uh, a sci-fi movie nowadays, I mean, J.J. Abrams seems to be the go-to guy now. Yeah, I mean, he he's sort of the the, the hottest thing that sci-fi has going, so. Yeah. Well, well, come on, well. he, turned, he made Star Trek look really cool. Yeah. And yeah. he's working on Star Wars <laughs> Episode Seven, so. Yep. Keep I mean, if you're going to take stuff. anybody else in sci-fi, you can grab Joss Whedon, but he's just going to kill everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Joss, Joss Whedon <laughs> isn't exactly known for leaving people alive. <laughs> yeah. And I like Gordon Freeman, so... Yeah, yeah, so we can't have none of that. Uh, next news story, The Witcher 3 announced, titled The Witcher 3, colon, Wild Hunt. Uh, coming to PC and next-gen consoles, which... Just makes me giddy hearing somebody say, "Yeah, we're making now. We get to say next gen again for generation." Yeah, 8. yeah, <laughs> gen eight, son. Um, and they're saying that's likely. CD Projekt Red is saying this is likely the last Witcher game they're gonna make, um, which is not surprising because the guy who wrote the Witcher books uh, has said he's never played the Witcher games, which is <laughs> weird. That was a little weird because he went, "Oh, video games? I don't play those. They're dumb." It's just like, mm, okay, interesting. Uh, and they're saying that they're going to shoot for um, t- a uh, world that's 20% larger than Skyrim's world. and uh, That's a lot of world. Sort of focus on it being a bit more um, open world and just sort of letting you... Apparently, Geralt now has his memories back. I don't... I never finished huh. either of the other Witcher games. Um, but apparently, it's all about him being a Witcher and witching. Uh, which just <laughs> means let's hunt down mystical and mythical enemies. Um, Witching it up. Yeah, just getting all witchy on it. 
Um, but that could be pretty cool, like an open world RPG where it's focused mainly on you know side quests and hunts and stuff like that. That could be pretty. Yeah. Cool. So here's hoping. Yeah, let's let's hope. I mean, I played a lot of the uh, first Witcher game. I've never beaten it, but every yeah. every time I play that game, I'm like, yeah, I know why people love this because this is awesome. And two is apparently it, really good too. Yeah, I've always been, been super so curious. Good. Always been super curious about Witcher. I just never really found the time to really just sit down and get into it. I don't know. Yeah. Apparently, Witcher two on consoles is really good. Nice. It's a good good experience there. And the last news story here, IGN acquired by Ziff Davis. Uh, Ziff Davis will now take over IGN, UGO, 1UP, and AskMen.com. Um, sort of weird now that 1UP is now getting rolled back into Ziff Davis after Ziff Davis yeah. sold it. Yeah, that's trying to cut it loose. <laughs> yeah, cut it loose a while ago. It, this well, is, it, whole thing is weird. It really is because, okay, so... From the ashes of Electronic Gaming Magazine was mm -hmm. One Up, and yeah. one, that was all part of Ziff Davis Media originally. And then Ziff Davis dropped them like a bad habit. IGN picks them up, yeah. And then now they're ever, everybody's back at Ziff Davis again. Yeah, it's like okay, so can I get EGM back because that magazine was great? Yeah, is <laughs> EGM dot com around anymore? I don't know. I don't think so. Hmm. Even if it, you know, even if it was, they don't have the writing staff anymore because yeah. uh, Dan Shu's gone. Yeah. So there's no reason, but man, like my that I love EGM because they had the greatest review system. Yeah. They would have three reviewers per game and they would do, you know, individual scores and then tally it up. So you would get a game that was really good, but you would get that like third odd opinion out and this guy'd be like, This game sucks. Yeah. If you don't yeah. like this type of game, yeah. don't play it. So you would actually occasionally get a game and go, Oh man, everyone's all excited about this and I would read a review in EGM and go, Oh wait a minute, if I don't like oh, well, eh, maybe maybe I'll wait on it then. Yeah. You know? I, I I do have to give a lot of credit though to um what Jeremy Parrish has done to one up. Um, yeah. He's really turned that, that ship around and focused it and made it more like um, an online magazine where he's really focusing on bigger, multi-part, really digging deep stories. I feel like Polygon gets a lot of credit for doing that right now, but Jeremy Parrish and his team over at 1UP are, are doing stuff that's just as good, if not better, and and really focusing on bigger meteor stories, not really being concerned about, here's what's happening in the news today, because everybody yeah. can do that. Everybody, anybody can get a press release, and anybody yeah. can spit that back out. But really digging deep into video games is something that, thankfully, more sites are doing, but not not that many are doing it really well. Yeah, you've pretty much got 1UP, Sutra, and Polygon sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So, kudos to them, and... Here's here's hoping that they stay around. You know, I I, yeah. I don't know how much that team has it left in them to keep jumping from one place to another. I mean, that has to get pretty tiring after a while. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, that's a modern conglomerate, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good point. But you know, if if you're somebody like Jeremy Parrish, who's been there for like ten, fifteen years, you know, how much how much more do you really want to keep going through that? So yeah. I guess we'll find out pretty shortly. For um, sure. But that's all the news stories we have. Uh, let's see another break. Right. Sweet. Break, 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 break. Woo! All right, I got to find out if IGN... <laughs> or EG, <laughs> is it EG, oh, EGM? EGM.com. EGM.com. Yeah. yeah, or EGMnow.com, I think it might have been. Something like that. Let's see. EGM, nope. EGM, EGM. EGMnow.com. Uh, let's see what happens. Looks like it's loading. I have a title. It looks like it's there, but it doesn't... Ooh. It's like a shell. It's horribly optimized. Oh, there's yeah. all the graphics. Yay! <laughs> wow, this thing's chucking. Oh, yeah, this is awful. Oh, yeah, it is still there. Yeah. It looks oh, like they're they still, still updating regularly, but... Yeah, they just put up uh, some stuff today. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. That's pretty cool. At least the name still lives on. Yeah. It's and the kind logo. of a shadow of its former self, though. Yeah. 
that was one of the things when I because I worked at Game Crazy for years, and you know you have to sell those. It's the same as GameStop. You have to sell those stupid discount cards. Yeah. And but the one thing was like, look, you don't care about the discount card. You get EGM. Yeah. Do you know how awesome this magazine <laughs> is? Well, <laughs> same thing with um, Game Informer. Game Informer has actually, for a long time now, been a really good magazine. Really. Yeah. I see. I remember working back in like 2004, 2005, and yeah. Game Informer was a, a pile. It, it was pretty terrible. Quickly after that, it it turned itself around, and it it's actually a really good magazine. Really good articles. Nice. You know, very well reasoned reviews. You know, I will have to stop throwing those out then. Yeah, they're, re- they're really good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's still fun just to get a periodical. Like, I even get the periodical for uh, Best Buy, the game magazine. Oh, at Gamer. Yeah. Which is. It's okay. I, I just had it something, seeing something new. And yeah. Something tangible in my hands, which is still fun. Yeah, it's an okay magazine. Yeah, I'm full digital. I'm, I don't like paper anymore. <laughs> yeah, I read Edge digitally every once in a while. They have a really yeah. cool um, digital version with trailers and stuff integrated in it. Yeah, like that's the stuff you haven't seen a really great like electronic magazine take off, and that that's disappointing to me. Yeah, there was I love, um, I love that concept. I really liked Atomics uh, on the iPad. Um, it was the old, okay. um, you know, the old One Up guys who went off to create oh, Area nice. Five. And after I think seven or eight issues, they said, "Well, we've made the framework. Now somebody else can pick it up." And I, the company they turned it over to, seems like they just they didn't. Oh, it's a shame. It's a bummer. It was a really cool format, but... Yeah. I don't know. Oh, all right. Oh, I can't wait for this hard drive to get here. It's going to be so nice. So much room for activities. Yeah, exactly. Even though I hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever watched the entirety of it. Oh, it's a shame. All right, are you guys it's ready like to... It's uh, bad. It's just... Ugh, the of entirety dumb. of what? Uh, uh, Step Brothers? Step Brothers. Eh, it's all right. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not great. All right, are you guys ready to uh, wrap this thing up? Yep. All right, starting in three, two, one. Let's talk about tweets. Tweets. Uh, first one here comes from Gibbynator says, "Have you tried DMC yet? You might like it." Um, I haven't really had the time to to spend all of the money on it. Um, <laughs> if I had the time, I would spend sixty bucks. I love Ninja Theory stuff, but um, I, I have way too many other games right now, and I'm I'm trying to get better about not spending sixty dollars to have a game sit on my shelf, but rather spending $30 when I have the time to play it and just yeah. buying two games that way. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of where where I was with... Because uh, I had just, like I said, I just wrapped up Lollipop Chainsaw last week yeah. and it's kind of clearing my mental way for Dead Space 3 and now that I've played through Dead Space 3, I'm not sure if I'm going to conquer it, but I haven't decided if I'm going down that rabbit hole yet. Yeah, mm. I'm really curious to find out what 8-bit mode is. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. For science. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. science. To and YouTube for science. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to the cloud. Yeah, the cloud. <laughs> but yeah, so it, that's why I'm kind of really torn. Either do I pick up a game that I already have and finish that, or do I go and pick up something new that's coming out next yeah. week? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to emails here. Uh, Ian writes in with a... Uh, a fantastic, also a question, but also a fantastic rest of development quote. Uh, excuse me, do these effectively hide my thunder? Um, <laughs> he says, to the greatest podcast on the net. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, what are your predictions for when the stick of truth will come out, and do you expect it to be a great game? Um, I still think it's on track, yeah. truthfully, for March. Um, and whether or not it'll be a great game depends on how much money they gave it to squash bugs yeah <laughs> so obsidian yeah. is a really great studio but if they don't if they aren't allowed the money to clean up bugs and and clean up the you know give it that little that last little spit shine on it 
uh, like Kotor 2, like Alpha Protocol, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> they, they don't, they, it's the difference between putting out a good game that's a flawed gem and a great game. Well, so. here's the thing with the stick of truth is graphically it didn't have to look amazing. No, it just yep. has to look like South Park, and it, it does. It just has to look like South Park, and the frame they set it up, it, really not a 3D game. Right, exactly. So I think the bugs, like mostly there's Plague Obsidian games, are graphical glitches and, and yeah. play mechanic glitches in a 3D environment. Yeah, yeah. Take that out of the equa equation, the stuff that, that the South Park game needs to be successful is its narrative and dialogue, yeah. which I, I think is going to be fine. Yeah, yeah especially and there, if you've got Trey and Matt working on it with them. So. Yeah, I, I would think that they have a, a pretty high standard and, and expectation of what they want to. I mean, if you look yeah. back at all the South Park games, there haven't been a, there hasn't been a good one. Yeah, yeah. the shooter was kind of fun, but was it good? No. Yeah. So, I mean, like even the XBLA one that came out recently, Tenorman's Revenge, that was a pile. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. Here's it, hoping. Yeah, yeah, should that's, be good. That's all we can do. And the final email this uh, time is from Dave, aka Robopig. Where it's in, it says, "Hi, boss and knobs and the Hannah. Well, uh, everyone has a game genre that just doesn't appeal to them. Uh, if you picture one that you don't enjoy, is there any fiction, book, movie, etc., it could be based on that might get you to play the game? Has it ever uh, happened? Uh, so he I gets have... a. Yeah, He gives a Go good ahead. example, because this, this didn't make a lot of sense to me until he gave an example. He said, uh, I've never had an interest in MMOs, but I think if someone could build one around the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I would have to give it a shot. Yeah, I would have to that as well. That sounds great. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, I think that'd be great, because I would love to explore the universe yeah. vicariously. Uh, sure. Hannah, what was your... Uh, what I have a thinking? fantastic example of this. I I hate RTS games. I'm awful at them, and I just n never had fun with them. Yeah. And then Brutal Legend came out. Yeah. And oh. I for for those of you that don't know, I'm a huge metalhead. Like the, I'm wearing a no shirt and Ale Storm. And for those yeah. of you who have heard Ale Storm, it is Scottish pirate metal. I encourage everyone to check it out. Um, <laughs> but I I just love heavy metal, and I, that's something that I I love about Tim Schafer. He not only loves heavy metal, but he understands people that love heavy metal. Yeah. And when you put that kind of like passion into a game like Brutal Legend, like that's one of my favorite games ever. Yeah. Yeah. Because of not only the world, but like the characters and like you've got Lemmy Kilmeister, the bassist of Motorhead, weaving bass strings out of spider silk. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a pretty great game. And it jumped into RTS and I was like, I have to what now? Oh no. Yeah. Oh. And with a controller? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> but why, God, why? I, it made I, that system work, though. They, they did, and yeah. I plowed through that game in a day. I yeah. finished that game in one single, like, 18-hour session. Yeah. And I, that's a, I gotta play that game again. It's pretty yeah, good. I was, like, I was surprised I don't own that game. I was looking through it, I was like, really? I kind of missed that game. I think I had it, it was my game. Oh, the, shoot. The soundtrack's awesome, too. Maybe it's still have it from... Still, maybe still, still have it from gameplay. Yep, stop it. Yep. There. Uh, I think my only thing is I I'm not a fan of sports games, and I think mm -hmm. if there was, if there was a way to make a turn-based fantasy sports game that isn't as uh, hardcore as the as Blood Bowl. Yeah, I was um, about to say. I would really like. I would really like something like because like the last sports game that I think I really nice. enjoyed that isn't golf is um, Mutant League football and hockey, um, just because they were kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. I sort of wish that there was, you know, like a fantasy turn-based football game. I would play that. Yeah. That but, would be but, an interesting concept, but not as yeah. hardcore as Blood Bowl because Blood Bowl is way above yeah what I can play. The like, rule set of Blood Bowl is chaotic and insane it's it's way too intimidating like that's exactly yeah. the game i want but not not that hardcore that a, a lower me. barrier for entry like that the yeah. threshold on blood bowl is like way up here you need to be like here yeah i need i need a <laughs> wall i can step over and not a 50 foot wall yeah. <laughs> and don't have to break out my climbing cleats yeah exactly <laughs> uh knobs what about you Oh man, I would say the game that gave me a little bit of hope for the 
RPG genre, because I had played a few when I was younger, just never really clicked with me, but mm -hmm. I think Lost Odyssey would be my game that kind of gave me a little glimpse into that, and then the next one I played was uh, Last Remnant and just shot it, shot it out of me. Well, you like Tales yeah. of Vesperia, though, right? The Tales of Vesperia was fun, but I still haven't got that one game where I just, like, I love this. Yeah. 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 Like, unless it's a considered effort on my part, I don't feel the need to play it. Yeah. What What do you think uh, would be the magical combo to, to oh. get your dream RPG? My dream RPG. And you can't say X-Men Legends 2. No, because <laughs> that's a beat-em-up. That, and that... Yeah, that it's a beat em up be, RPG though. I mean that would be but I'm I'm talking about traditional like turn based yes, JRPG. Game. Oh man, what it'd if probably there was be a, so, it'd probably be some along the lines of like uh like a mech game. I, here I have a I have a suggestion for you. A fully cooly JRPG. I'd be down. Yep. Yeah. I I would be down for that madness. Let's do it. Oh. I would it be would honest. be five well, hours you know long, what? and it would be the best five hours. I of your take life. I take that yeah. back. It would either be it would be a berserk based RPG. Ooh, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say because there's enough characters in that universe. Yeah, it'd be eight hundred hours long. I would. <laughs> yeah. I don't make it an MMO. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Don't even give them ideas. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's all of our emails and tweets this week. Uh, if you'd like to visit us, please do so at tvgp.tv. Email us at tvgpfans at gmail.com. Uh, and everything else on the right hand side of the page, you know where to go. Just go find it. And, and join the forums. Don't forget to mark yourselves on the map. Check out our leaderboards and Monday Night Game Night recaps in the online gaming thread. Mm -hmm. uh, and as while you're there, join us for tonight at 10 p.m. EST for Left 4 Dead 2. More players, more welcome. It's on the 360. Everyone is welcome to play. Uh, and the last thing is, please join us um, every Sunday. Uh, the, all the details are on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, Twitch.tv slash E1M1 Network for live streams. Uh, we would yep, love to, yep, yep. you to join us, and we'd love for you to chat with us. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye, haters. Peace. Titles. I got a few. I've got two. I'll I'll do mine first then. Uh, oh my face. Uh, it, otherwise, it'd be too <laughs> long. It's oh a necromorph. Oh my face. Um, I, and the other I have one, one similar. It was oh my god my face. <laughs> uh, that's not bad. Uh, and the other one I have is um hugging and huffing. Yeah, I got that one too. <laughs> yeah. uh, good old so I got a, I got a couple a couple other ones. Six foot five corrections. Yeah. Uh, oh my god my face. So many limbs. Shambling horror. Uh, X all over it. Uh, that's a lot of X. Uh, I don't even know what those were. I love that you picked X all over it, even though that's I think episode eight's title. Oh seriously? Yeah. It's like and eight or eighteen that, or something. It was I a think very that was mine too. I think it was the very first nice. episode Nobs was in. That's why. Callback. Very nice. <laughs> See, I didn't I didn't listen to all the uh, previous episodes. I just hopped on and kept going. Well, now <laughs> now I gotta fire you. Yeah, well, <laughs> all right, see you later. So you'll see get you the later, rest of my guys. titles then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next gen again, Gen Eight Sun, uh, getting all witchy on it. To the cloud and for science. I kind of like hugging and huffing. I'm yeah, I'm kind of a big fan of that one. Because neither of those have G's. It's hugging apostrophe and huffing apostrophe. Yeah, huffing. that's exactly how I put it down. Yeah. Who said that? <laughs> I did. Yeah. What, what, it was, uh, was that? in reference to the Dead Space, the O2 canisters, or whatever oh, they were. Oh, Huggin' and Huffin'. I got Huggin it. Yep. Alright, I'm going to circle that one. Cool. Alright, starting in 3, 2, 1. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 277, for February 11th, 2013. Huggin' and Huffin'. Sweet, blissful O2. Breathe in, breathe out. Yum, yum. Hush, right. hush. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on live stream. See you next week. Goodbye. Hey, it is.